much. <laughs> hey, thanks for tuning in. Lars is back once again to do the horror example series, the William Lilly's, yeah, William Lilly's masterful work. And today we are going to discuss about if a rumor or report were true or not. So I think this is one another important case. I think which Lars has already uh, is already interested in. He has he's done it once or twice. I think. I mean, not once or twice, but uh, this example itself. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I've had um, I have had some luck uh, doing these hor- a couple of these horary questions. I can definitely remember at least one where um, it was you know somebody asked me like so one friend thought that the other friend was like hitting on his girlfriend or something or tried to make a move when they were drunk and like who's telling the truth here like because she says one thing he says another thing and they're both my friends and so I did the chart and I was like yeah I I think I think he's telling the truth and then later it did come out that he was telling the truth so you know I was I was able to to get that correct uh the uh, Lily's methodology and whatnot, which is described a few pages earlier, but we're going to just focus on his example chart, which is with a a report that Cambridge was taken by the King's forces, if that's true. And I guess this was during some sort of battle or war in, um, in Britain when Lily was alive. And I don't, I have to apologize because I don't really know the history around it, but, uh, I think there are some, um, there are some books that, uh, that describe this actually that describe this stuff. I think actually, uh, I think Wade caves has published a book about like sort of the life and times. Yeah. William really. Yes. Uh, I think it, it was yeah. just, just a year ago or something if I'm not wrong. Yeah. So that, that would be a place to go for people who, you know, wanted to take a look at that. And, um, but yeah, we're just kind of interested in, uh, just the astrology of it right now. So do you want to share the screen? Yeah, uh, sure, sure. Cool. Great. So yeah, this is the chart. And uh, yeah, before I get started, like, you know, there's, there's kind of a bunch of rules for a question like this, you know, is the rumor true? And I think a lot of times it's interesting because people ask, people ask questions like, did this happen? And they really should just be asking if the rumor is true. Because the thing, the thing about it is that like you can ask, did such and such a person like do this thing that I heard about them doing, right? And you can try to read the chart to see if they actually did this thing, but it's actually a lot easier to just say it w- was the information they gave me true or not, uh-huh. you know? Because if, if it's not something you were directly involved with, if it's not something you witnessed, right? Then why, you know, like why are we, if you heard about it, you know, why are we trying to ascertain if it really happened? Like kind of mechanistically, just, just ascertain if the information itself is true or not. That's really all you need to do. So I think that's cool. And this is considered a third house question, but we actually, there's a great deal of emphasis placed upon the angles and it's pretty much the basic rules are like, it's, it's true if you have fixed signs on the angles Uh and the moon is in good, a good house in good condition, separating and aspected by benefics and there are malefics, you know, relatively free from the angles, or if there's not malefics free from the angles, they're at least in good dignity. Okay. So, um, you know, Lily's going to get pretty in depth here, but I just want to point out, like we have, uh, we have cardinal signs on the angles, which is not uh, really supportive of it being true. And we have a fallen Mars and a fallen Saturn on the angle square and so on, which points yet again to it. It's unlikely that it's actually true. Mm -hmm. Now we do have Venus uh, squaring the moon, for example, uh, exalted Venus or whatever, squaring the moon and the moon applying to it. Um, So I'll be curious to see what Lily's going to say about that. And I guess the moon separates from Jupiter, right? So who knows, maybe maybe he'll say that it's, you know, possibly like there's some some truth here or he'll just analyze that for something else. Uh, but I don't remember exactly what he says, but I, I'm pretty sure that uh, the overall 
testimony here is going to is going to be that it's uh, it's false. So yeah, let's just get reading. Okay. Uh, did you want to say anything about that actually? No, I think we'll just come to our own conclusion uh, after finishing Lily's. So I think. Okay, that, great, cool. So I think that, that that was the way we've been doing. So let's continue. Just. Okay, great. And what we also noticed too, it's Mars day and Venus hour, and that Venus, even in, though it's in good condition, is cadent, which is kind of a stain, uh, at least in this type of chart. Yeah. So. First, I considered that the angles were all movable and that Mars did vitiate the cusp of the 10th and Saturn the cusp of the 7th. One argument, the report was false. Secondly, I found the moon cadent and in Gemini, a sign wherein she nothing delights, a second strong evidence of a false rumor. Okay. The moon has no dignity, is what basically what it's saying. Uh -huh. So thirdly, I found North Node on the cusp of the Ascendant. A sign of a good to the parliament for the first house signified that honorable society. I found Venus lady of the ascendant and our significant tricks in her exaltation, but Mars lord of our enemies ascendant, the seventh entering his fall vis-a-vis -vis cancer and afflicted by the square of Saturn. So basically now what he's doing is he's actually just kind of turning this chart into, he's reading it for the forces of, uh, the king versus the enemy forces. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this is like, now he's kind of making it, he's taking it in a different territory, which is interesting. So, so he's basically saying that the North node in the first is good for our forces. And then all, and these malefics and South node in the, in the seventh is, is the opposite. It's not good for the enemy. So I saw the moon separating from Jupiter placed in the seventh, and transferring his light and virtue to Venus, which gave me reason to suspect that there would come good to us or our side from this report of rumor and no benefit to our enemies. So that means that the moon just aspected Jupiter and now it's transferring that Jupiter Venus. energy to Venus mm. because it's going to aspect Venus next. Yeah. And that's good for the first house because Venus rules the first house. Uh-huh. I saw Mars and Saturn in a square, which assured me our enemies were so full of division and treason, treason and thwarting one another's designs that no good should come to them upon this report. And so in short, I judged Cambridge was not taken and what we heard of its taking were lies. And again, this makes abundant sense because Saturn is placed in the seventh. So even though Mars and Saturn aspect the first house, it's more of a seventh house influence because Saturn is placed there in yeah. a very close square to Mars. And Mars is more it's like a little tiny bit more widely square, the ascendant descendant, right? So we see that that Mars is, is really harming the enemy and is, sign and is signifying the enemy, right? It's ruling the enemy uh, as ruling the seventh house. Whereas our, you know, what Lily calls our forces, right? First house Venus is, even though it's in the sixth, it's still, it's still exalted, right? It's still getting this transfer of light from Ju uh, moon, mm -hmm. transferring light from Jupiter, which is going to bonify Venus. Jupiter is also the Lord of Pisces. So that helps even more and so on and so forth. <clears throat> Um, okay, so had this question been propounded whether the querent should have brothers or sisters, then you should have converted the judgment thus. So do you, do you think we should read the rest of this? Because now he's, he's using it as an example of other third house matters. Uh, I, I don't know. Maybe uh, we can just first kind of bring out the conclusion from our own side. The sure. Show. Yeah. Let's, let's do that. And then uh, why don't we just read the rest of it? Cause it, it'll be yeah. fine. Yeah. Um, so I, yeah, I wanted to point out too, that we have, uh, you know, Mercury in a Mars ruled sign can join the yeah. South node. Th that's this what is, I wanted to say at first. Yeah. Yeah. Mercury, uh, Mercury is the natural significator of news or message. And yes. Mercury, is, Mercury is not placed in its, uh, you know, most friendly sign. And uh, it is more like, and it is also conjunct the south node, and it's more likely yeah. that the news is uh, false, or uh, yeah, right, and that they made it up, you know, because it's in their mm -hmm. house and so on. Um, you know, the idea that this is also interesting because he's sort of doing, he's checking it in a double manner, right? He's already established that the rumor is false based on the the most simple basic rules for 
assessing this kind of thing, um, you know, which is the angles and the moon and the benefics and malefics, like I talked about. Um, we could also add that the third Lord Jupiter, or no, I'm sorry, according to Lily, the third Lord would be Mars because the third cusp is in Scorpio. So yeah, that's interesting that's because again, Mars is, is fallen, not in good condition, very unlikely that the rumor is true. But he's also, he's also showing us that the likelihood of the enemy being able to take Cambridge, having the power to take Cambridge, is very low because it's their seventh house is afflicted by south mode and fallen Saturn. And that fallen Saturn is also afflicting fallen Mars, which rules the seventh. So even though they have this nice Jupiter here, unfortunately this this Jupiter is 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 not is not strong enough in and of itself to really overcome this like kind of brutal malefic thing going on. So yeah, he's saying like they're not even strong enough to have taken Cambridge, you know, plus it's Venus hour, which is, you know, the ascendant Lord. So that gives more, even more strength to Venus to our, our forces. Right. Yeah. I, I mean, yeah, it's, it's the, there is nothing. I mean, it's just going against their side and yeah. the news is probably false. Again, it is kind of, it's favoring. And uh, uh, this is another horary uh, trick that, a lot of stuff lies in which way the question is posed. So yeah. th that is, th I mean, that is entirely another topic of discussion, the philosophical side of how to ask a question. But Yes. And this is a good reminder to me as well, because I love this kind of multidimensional stuff in horary. And I, I sometimes forget about this stuff. You know, it's like you can do both, right? You can see if the rumors likely true or false and then you can also go a step further and say like oh yeah like this is also a question about the person's friend so let's look at the 11th house and like is the friend even uh thinking about these things or is the friend even capable of doing these things that the rumor says they did right and if it's like no then you really know or if it's yes for both right you really know uh sometimes it's more like a lot of times, you know, life isn't black and white. So a lot of times there's kind of some gray area, you know, uh, and that that is another thing that can show up in these kinds of question charts. But that that requires a little bit more subtlety to judge. And that's that's when you're really going to have to get more into these uh, this kind of alternate analysis that Lily is also doing here mm. when it's not so clear when it's like, well, it's like pieces of it's like partly true you know so like what's what's really true here and what's really not true like you know especially if you asked if it, if it was a complex rumor right like it's like oh did the person like uh get as much money as they said they did and did they like actually travel where they said they did and did they actually get the promotion they, like, if it's like a bunch of questions you know like yeah. it could be it could be one where you see like, oh, well, part of this is true. And then you got to go in and see their like, you know, their 11th house and their 10th house and their whatever, you know, whatever other question, their ninth house because of travel, you know? <laughs> <It's> like, yeah. <laughs> but I, I also think it's interesting that Jupiter um, in terms of like uh, bringing in some Vedic techniques, Jupiter has no Digbala in the seventh. Mm -hmm. And I've, I've very often seen Jupiter be like semi spoiled in the seventh from a classical predictive perspective where Jupiter can even be in like a pretty good sign. But if it's in the seventh, because it has no Digbala, it, yeah. um, it just doesn't, it, it gives an abundant amount of like lovers and marital things and whatnot and partnerships. But oftentimes there's something sort of like fleeting about them or spoiled or, you know, the person has like legal and monetary trouble because of other people. Yeah. Mm. Jupiter's also a malefic Lord here as well, ruling the third whole sign and the sixth, right? So Jupiter is actually uh, fairly malefic for a Libra ascendant, whether it's uh, a I mean, fully, Yeah, it's uh, Libra. I mean, for Libra, Jupiter is never considered to be a very, you know, right. Very, yeah. Sure. Now, on the other hand, you know, like I can't ignore Lily's statement about moon separating from Jupiter and applying to Venus. I think overall that still is auspicious. 
And it's especially auspicious because of the context and because Jupiter is the Lord of the sign Venus is in, right? So, and they're both benefics, right? They both have kind of a common agenda anyway, especially since Venus is in the sixth here. So it's not really, you know, you really, you do always have to look at the overall context, but it's just interesting because we don't see Jupiter really helping that seventh house or that enemy, right? Even though it, it appears like, oh, well, but they've got Jupiter in the seventh. It's like, yeah, but they've got Malefic Saturn, Malefic South Node, arguably Malefic Mercury, and then now arguably Malefic Jupiter, right? So it's like four Malefics in the seventh house, really just, it, yeah, it's just not, it's not good, you know? Yeah, and uh, Mercury, apart from being the ninth lord, is also the ruler of the twelfth house, uh, which yeah. kind of, again, I mean, it kind of showers a lot of uncertainty over uh, the news, which again leads to, uh, you know, false. I think Mercury's dignity alone is kind of super descriptive here, and its connection with sure. South Node and Saturn is probably uh, the most prominent, which will, uh, which holds a major significance or establishment in terms of why the news is probably going to be false i mean the rumor is probably yeah. going to be false so yep i think this is fairly uh, a very simple chart as to what we have seen for the past two episodes and uh, yeah and that's yeah so i mean cool well, yeah let, let me read the yeah sure oh sorry did you have something else you were gonna no, no I, I was just going to say that so many things are very explicit here and we don't have to. Yes. Of, yeah. Yeah. And it's nice. And this is a good example of the North node, AKA Rahu yeah. being a boon to something because uh, ultimately Rahu as a malefic is always, is always actually going to be helpful in terms of like getting what you're after. For right? sure. And whereas K2 is very otherworldly, right? So K2 doesn't like the world. So K2 is really not going to help you get what you're after yeah. in, in terms of a worldly thing. So that's why, so again, like context is so important, you know, like the North Node in the first house in this particular context is very helpful. Sure. You know, whereas it might not be in another context or in the nativity, it could be very problematic. It just depends on... A lot of other factors so anyway he's gonna now give an example of like how to judge siblings from this chart so had this question been propounded whether the querent should have brothers or sisters then you should have converted the judgment thus the sign of the third is a fruitful sign meaning that it's a water sign so mm -hmm. scorpio is where the third cusp is sure uh, wherein the lord of the third is placed is a fruitful sign so mars even though fallen in cancer it is in its own bounds, actually, and it's in a fruitful sign. Yeah. So then yeah, Moon Mars applies... Oh, go ahead. Yeah. No, yeah, Mars is known, but yes. Yeah. So then Moon applies to Venus, who is placed in a fruitful sign and exalted. Um, as you see in page 89, where all these signs are noted prolific or signs arguing fruitfulness. And this can also be used to judge things like marriage and friends and... Yeah, sure. Just about anything, really. <laughs> um, from hence, you might have assured the querent he might have expected both brothers and sisters, or a plentiful, numerous kid, or a plentiful, numerous kindred, but more sisters than brothers, because all the signs are feminine, as you may see, page eighty-eight. And Mars, Lord of the Third, is in a feminine sign. Yet, in regard, the Moon, who is dispositor of Mars, is in Gemini, a masculine sign, and in sextile Platic with Jupiter, a masculine planet, angular and in a masculine sign and house, it's an argument of the demandants having a brother or brethren. And, and I would point out too that the moon is applying to Venus. So again, that, that would also argue sisters, but I can see what he's saying. It would probably be a mixture of both, right? Especially since the moon is going from Jupiter bounds to Venus bounds. That's another indication that it'd probably be both and a plentiful amount. And, you know, the, uh, again, co context, super important, right? Like in this context, Mars is, we can observe Mars in his own bound in Cancer, which is fallen, right? But in an angle, okay? And so basically, this actually gives Mars quite a bit of strength to show that the person may have a lot of siblings. Um, I would also add that the, 
and I'm not done reading, but I would also add real quick, the lot of fortune in a fruitful sign is also a general testimony sure. of having a lot of brothers or sisters, like a lot of kindred. Um, even though it's not in the third house, it doesn't matter. It's just like when it's, it's also placed in a fruitful sign, it's just naturally a testimony. And same with questions about childbirth or even marriage and stuff. Like you do want to just see the lot of fortune generally and see what's happening to it. So yeah, let's continue. It were too nice a point in art to predict of the certain numbers, since we only intend to satisfy ourselves in general, leaving the disposing and determination of their certain number to divine providence. So he's just saying like the exact number in these situations is not really very important. It's like a lot, a little, or somewhere in between is really what you need to tell somebody. The third house, no ways afflicted or any ill aspects between Venus, significant tricks of the querent and Mars, Lord of the third, both being in signs of the same nature and moon applying by a square Dexter in signs of short ascents and to Venus. Moon having lately and yet being within orb, orbs of the sextile of Jupiter, these argue in agreement, concord, and unity between the Quirin's kindred and him, and between him and such brothers or sisters as he should in the future have. So um, just real quick, again, uh, moon applying to a square of Venus in shine, signs that rise quickly or short ascension, Pisces and Gemini. And again, those signs are from Capricorn to Gemini, signs of short ascension. It basically argue the way Lily uses it, and this does work very well and is a very ancient technique, it shrinks the aspect to a sextile. Mm. So it is a square, but it, it, it behaves more like a sextile. And again, it's the context. I don't think this is appropriate always in every horary chart. It's not appropriate in a lot of natal situations, but it is something that, that is, you know, keep in mind and it does often work well to note that. So um, I, you know, what I would, I would think too, and maybe Lily just didn't want to go to this place. I would think that the Saturn squaring the third Lord would create some problems for the siblings sure. or at least some of the person's siblings uh, and Mars being fallen shows that as well. And at the same time, Saturn conjunct the south node, that does lessen in some ways Saturn's power to really harm Mars. And Mars is also receiving Saturn. So yeah, and again, Mars is again not in a good dignity except for being placed in its own time. Right. So, you know, it's not it's not enough to, to destroy that fertility regarding kindred. But if we go back to the chart on the, you know, the question about rumors about Cambridge and stuff, like how do we apply all that stuff there? Well, if we wanted to get into more detail, we would just say that like, it just shows that the enemy is not completely crushed, right? The enemy still has some power, but is clearly in a place of inner conflict it's and stress. debilitation, distress, right? So it's not complete, they're not completely destroyed but they're definitely distressed, you know? And if Saturns can join the South Node, they are probably losing ground, like literally losing land and ground, especially since Saturn is the ruler of the fourth house, naturally symbolizing lands and ground, right? And Saturn and again, Mars also, is yeah, bars and Mars sometimes refers to buildings and Saturn often refers to lands. So yeah, you can see like the enemy uh, probably- uh, I take Mars as lands. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, in, in uh, typically in the Persian texts, uh, Saturn is uh, used for like land and agriculture and yeah, building. Yeah, I know, I know. Uh, it. it's, yeah. it's, uh, people associate uh, agriculture with Saturn, but uh, I, this is a family technique that I learned from my grandfather, again, using yeah. Mars for land. So, yeah. I, I've seen that in other Jyotish classics too, that yeah, people Mars in Jyotish... Typically, they just use Mars for lands and even buildings, right? For like real estate. Oh, buildings, for buildings, moon. Buildings, moon. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. Well, I don't, Mars, yeah, I don't know. Mars as well, but uh, buildings is something that has shape and uh, it needs construction. And moon is naturally associated with something that has, I mean, something that you need to give shape or that has to be given shape. So that's, that's yeah, that makes sense. Uh, 
So yeah, I don't know. And I have, admittedly, admittedly, I have seen Mars show success in real estate for sure. Exactly. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, definitely. I've seen that. And then I also did do a horary once where a lot with horary, a lot of it depends on how you relate to it. So like I did a horary for somebody purchasing some property once and I knew I was going to use Saturn, right? I wasn't going to use Mars. I was going to use Saturn. So sure enough, Saturn in that chart made a lot of sense and Saturn was retrograde, okay. which also made sense because the land was like, it was kind of like stuck. Like the person was asking too much money for it. They were like not really willing to sell it. They were kind of just being curmudgeonly and stuff. So, um, so it was kind of that type of thing, you know, Okay. but yeah, you, you got to Like before you cast the horary chart, I find that it's important to get really clear on, on how you're going to look at it because once you get clear on how you're going to look at it, if you go, okay, I'm going to take Mars for lands in this question about lands, right? Then once you get clear, that's the right time to cast the chart. You know, that's the right time. Like it's yeah. not, it's, it's not when the person asks it, it's when you, it's when you hear or see the written question, like an email, let's say, when you see that email, when you, and not only that, when you understand what they asked, right? So if they send you an email or tell you over the phone or whatever, and you're like, okay, I don't, I don't quite get it. Like, can you explain it? Or I need to think about this. And then you spend like five minutes thinking about it. And then you're like, oh, that's what they're asking that's when you cast the chart exactly right? that's, that's, that's when you actually Frawley, do that's what john frawley talks about it uh, in in the yes you know the very first pages of this book uh, of his book itself so i think uh, at one point of time i think i want to kind of bring uh, you know a collaborative video with uh, some other horror astrologers to talk about Great. Uh, this philosophical context of horror astrology uh, to, to yeah talk. Yeah, so yeah, I think that will be a good discussion. But I think that's it for uh, this video. Uh, thank yeah. you so much, Lars, for joining. And I'm sure. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Bye bye. Okay.